Nice little dance up front, isn't that good? A little do -si do <laughs> Good morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, I welcome you to Hamish Springs Community Presbyterian Church on this beautiful, beautiful Lord's Day. It is the fourth Sunday of Lent, a sacred time in the life of a church. And as we move through this season of Lent, we invite you to come be a part of the Lenten study we're doing on Wednesday evenings. At six o'clock, it starts with a very simple soup supper and continues with discussion and prayer. So if you'd like to come be a part of that Lenten study, please do. We're studying Forgiveness, a book by Marjorie Thompson. And it's really been a, a fine conversation thus far. You can jump in at any, any point in the study because I figure we all need forgiveness somewhere so we can talk about it. Uh, also, uh, please, uh, this is just a little help on the uh, broadcasting. If you could turn your cell phones, turn the Wi-Fi part off, because it interrupts the broadcasting and it's harder to get, get the signal out. So if you'd help us do that, that'd be greatly appreciated. It is also a sacred day in the life of this congregation as we welcome the Reverend Takako Torino to our pulpit. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes. Chicago is the candidate chosen by our pastor nominating committee after many months of prayer and preparation, discussion, prayer, interviews, negotiating, prayer, and finally choosing Takako to be our new pastor. And did I mention prayer? Yes, we've all been praying. The PNC, I'm sure Takako. Uh, this congregation we've been praying for God's wisdom and God's um, leading us to the right person to, to be our pastor. And it's a joy to come to this day in which we will get to meet Takako and to lead worship, uh, be in worship with her as we all gather to worship God. There will be a congregational meeting immediately following the worship service. The order of business will be vote on the recommendation of the pastor nominating committee to call the Reverend Takako Torino to the, be pastor of Hamas Springs Community Presbyterian Church. Yeah. Sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> you betcha. Are there other announcements to share with the church family? You want to say it's going to be a paper ballot? Uh, it will be a paper ballot, and we'll get into the details of all the voting and how that will happen. I'm sure James, our uh, clerk of sessions, will uh, be able to describe everything to a T in our congregational meeting. Because I got faith in you, James. You do good work. <laughs> we'll see. Any we'll other announcements to share? Yes, ma'am. I would like to say hallelujah and welcome that Troy is here, visiting from Estes Park, and he's got Riley with her also. Riley's parents, Mark and Susan Adams from Maine. Wonderful. Well, welcome. Yeah. Welcome. So nice to have you. Other announcements? Yes, sir. Listen, what a joy to have you here. God bless you. What a joy. Well, here are no other announcements. Let's take a few moments to center ourselves and prepare to continue our worshiping of our Lord. Good morning. 
And I hope you'll join me for the call to worship and we'll read it responsibly. <clears throat> In Christ, the God of heaven has made a home on earth. Christ dwells among us and this is one with us. Highest of all creation, he lives among the very least. He journeys with the rejected and welcomes the weary. Come now, all who thirst, and, and drink the water of life. Come now, all who hunger, and be filled with good things. Come now, all who seek, and, and be at home with God in Christ, who we We'll be singing in 408, There's a Sweet, Sweet Spirit. <laughs> presence of the holy, our own humanity is laid bare. When we stand in the living presence of truth, our own falsehood is revealed. Let us acknowledge who we are, joining our voices in the prayer of confession. God of justice and mercy, in your presence we confess our sins. The of this world. You made us in your image with a mind to tell you, a heart to love you, and a will to serve you. But our knowledge is imperfect, and our love becomes distant, and our dreams incomplete. Day by day, you fail to grow into your delightfulness, and your tender love. Awaken our hearts to the promised gift of your indwelling spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
beloved people of God. Hear the good news. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Believe the good news and give your thanks. In Jesus Christ, we are to forgive. Amen. And as a response, we're going to read one verse, a uh, sing one verse, and it is well with my soul. <laughs> Sometimes the people look kind of disappointed because that's not what we expected. And I said, well, I'll be from Albuquerque. I'm from New York. <laughs> New York, you know? And sometimes people are not quite convinced. And I said, no, I'm from Japan. And they said, yeah. <laughs> and I left home when I was like 15. But strange thing I discovered. I grew up in a church like just like you did. I had a space just like you did when I was your age. And every time I went to a new place, whether it's in New York or Albuquerque, when I walk into the church building, it smelled like home. <laughs> and I think it's this that's how God smells. I know my God smell. And it makes me feel right at home. So I know this is your home. And do you see all these people around there? Shiloh, do you see all these people? They find homes in here too. Can I show you the house? You want to see God's house? Okay, go like this. I'll show you. Go like that. Sit back. Bring it right inside with the fingers crossed. And put your index fingers up. Does it look like a church? <laughs> yeah? But kind of, right? You open the door and all the people in it. <laughs> and this is where we are, right here this morning. And I know I somewhere along the way, I can't remember where, but I won the song about last house. And I asked our friends to lead us and teach us a song with the guitar. Would you like to join us? Here we 
we are hanging out of our house. It feels like our house sometimes. Spend good times here and have good experiences here. Teach us this song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, sorry. So, y'all y'all can help the children with this. And then, so, the, it, uh, it goes, uh, I'll teach the words first. This is the Lord's house. Everybody's welcome. Say it. This, this is the Lord's house. house. Everybody's welcome. Second time. This is the Lord's house, and everybody's welcome. Third time. This is the Lord's house, and everybody's welcome. That's three quarters of the song. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, come on in and taste the bread of life. Come on in and taste the bread of life. So the two of you. This is the Lord's house, and everybody's welcome. This is the Lord's house, everybody's welcome. This is the Lord's house, everybody's welcome. And this is the Lord's house, everybody's welcome. This is the Lord's house, everybody's welcome. This is a Lord's house, everybody's welcome. This is a Lord's house, everybody's welcome. This is a Lord's house, everybody's welcome. And this is a Thank you for this house where everybody is welcome. And thank you for these children welcoming one another. And for all the welcome we have already felt in this place. And be with us as we go through the day. In Christ's name, amen. 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 This morning from the Hebrew scripture is from Isaiah chapter 27, verses 2 through 6. I'm reading from uh, the New Revised Standard Version, which is in the pews. <laughs> On that day, a pleasant vineyard, sing about it. I, the Lord, am its keeper. Every moment I water it, I guard it night and day, so that no one can harm it. I have no wrath. If it gives me thorns and briars, I will march to battle against it. I will burn it up, or else let it cling to me for protection. Let it make peace with me. Let it make peace with me. In days to come, Jacob shall take root. Israel shall blossom and put forth shoots and fill the whole world with fruit. The word of the Lord. Thank you, The gospel lesson this morning is from the book of John, chapter 18, verses 1 to 11. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already 
being cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hamas Springs Community Presbyterian Church, serving from the heart of Hamas Springs. We remain the heartbeat of Hamas now and into God's future. These words greeted me as I opened the welcome page of the church website. This is you telling the world who you are and what you aspire to do. And what was I doing looking up your church website? Well, the Presbyterian system of matching a congregation with a pastor is not exactly an online online dating service, but it has similarities. <laughs> you put yourself out there in cyberspace, and you all entrusted your PNC, the pastor no name, really, to however representation you've been read out there. Then you get matched, and then you get to check each other out. <laughs> however, there's one important difference between the Presbyterian system and online dating sites. <laughs> ours, as Jeff reminded us, ours is a spirit-led process through and through. It only works if all the parties involved trust God's spirit and follow her lead. As I prepare to join you in worship this morning, these words I just read your welcome statement provided me with the lens through which I approach the scripture for today. Together now, let us join our hearts in prayer. Oh, Holy Spirit, open our hearts and enter in so we may hear your word for us in this place at this time. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. As some of you know, I am concluding my time as chaplain at Menon School. The last semester, I was blessed to have the opportunity to teach world religion to the eighth graders. And it is, I confess, it is only now that I look back and I can say that was a blessing. <laughs> at, the time, at the time, it was a real challenge for which I pray for God's grace every day. But one of the blessings, while I teach, while I was teaching that class, I came across this Latin term, axis mundi, the center of the world. And apparently, it is a common notion shared by many cultures. And apparently, human societies have a tendency to see themselves at the center of the world. In one sense, it means the place of origin and homeland 
of the people. One example is this, the name of the country of China. <laughs> Comprised of two characters, it literally means the middle nation or the nation at the center. I grew up in Japan and on the wall by a dining table hung a map of the world. I grew up looking at it every day. And guess what was at the center of that map? <laughs> Japan. <laughs> so imagine my disorientation when I came to this country as a high school sophomore and saw the real world map in the classroom. I finally understood why the country of my origin was referred to as Far East. <laughs> And in contrast to this human tendency to place ourselves at the center, the collective human saga is full of stories of decentering, dislocation, and displacement. The first human experience in that scripture is the story of Adam and Eve, who got themselves expelled from the garden for disobeying God. And in that center, of that garden was the tree of life God had planted. Ever since then, humanity has been pushing one another off the center. The story of Jacob running from home after tricking his brother Esau. His son Joseph being trafficked to Egypt by his brothers. And Moses leading the Hebrews out of Egypt through the wilderness the ancient Israelites in exile. Then there's that prodigal son who set off for a faraway country. These and other stories in the Bible echo in the lives of the lived experience of the people of West Central Africa caught in the transatlantic slave trade. The Native Americans displaced from their land the Jewish diaspora, and countless migrants fleeing the war and violence throughout history, down to what is happening to the people of Ukraine at this very moment. And even closer to home, the indigenous women and girls gone missing. So in a purely geographical sense, Axis Mundi the center of the world remained elusive, for people are uprooted everywhere and the center cannot hold. And even without any shift in the place, things happen in life that throw us completely off center. Life happens and pulls the rug out of under our feet, leaving us feeling disconnected or simply lost. Axis Mundi, however, has a spiritual dimension that is also shared widely by many religious traditions and spiritual heritages. It is a perceived center of the world where heaven and earth are connected, a sacred site where heaven meets earth, a portal to the divine. They are the thin places in the Celtic spirituality a place where the veil between the, this world and the eternal world becomes very thin. In the sand dance of the native peoples of the Great Plains, it is the cottonwood tree that is carefully selected and cut down and then ritually carried to the spot that becomes the connecting link between the earth and the heavens. Axis Mundi. It is only a human notion, but it speaks of our undeniable sense that somehow we are connected to the center that does hold when we become one with the divine. In today's gospel reading from John, Jesus is speaking to his disciples right after what would be their last supper together. He knows his time has come to be decentered, that he will be taken away from them very soon. And yet, 
his parting words to the disciples are, abide in me as I abide in you. Remain with me as I remain with you. Make home in me as I make home in you. Jesus is telling this to the disciples who will soon find themselves on the other side of Easter, just as you and I are. Jesus is called to abide in him as he also abides in us, now and always. And how is this to be? So what images, I wonder, you got as you heard the word of this passage today? And let us follow up on that image. Jesus first says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower, revealing who he is in his relationship with God. Then he says the second time, I am the vine, and you are the branches, revealing who he is in his relationship with us. With these two I am statements, Jesus launches himself smack in the middle between God and the community of faith. And he's inseparable from either one. When Jesus speaks of himself as the vine, his words are not just about who he is. He's pointing to the interrelationship of God, Jesus, and the community in the life of faith, with Jesus at the connecting center. If Jesus as the vine is our max, our axis mundi, the center of the world, we see that this center is not a static standalone tree. It exists only because the gardener who waters it and it bears fruit only through the vines growing out of it. The images of the gardener, the vine, and the branches point us to an organically interconnected center full of life and action, pruning, growing, and bearing fruits. And to bear fruit is a common image of the Hebrew scriptures to speak of a community's faithfulness. Bearing fruit is Jesus' way of speaking about the works of love we do, the works of love to which we are called. Jesus' words prunes the disciples, his church, just as the gardener prunes the branches, in keeping our relationship with Jesus the vine healthy and strong, which is the key to bearing fruit. And this community may be one big intermingling mess of a branches in the vine, but all run together as they grow out of the central vine. I have a friend who has a such who has such a huge jungle of a grapevine in his backyard. The branches are indistinguishable and almost impossible to tell which branches, which branches are bear, uh, bearing fruit. But as a whole, it's plenty fruitful. Okay. There are no freestanding individuals in this community, but branches who encircle one another. To live as the branches, branches of the vine is to belong to one organic unity shaped by the hands of God who lovingly prunes it. The church as the body of Christ thus becomes axis mundi, a beating heart of a community in which members are known for their acts of love they do in common with all other members. When I was brought into this world, my axis mundi was a small church built by a young Japanese woman pastor. She studied at the Women's Divinity School in Tokyo during the World War II. After the war, she spread out a map of the Branta Tokyo and had a vision of a church in the middle of it. 
She knew that the war-torn downtown Tokyo, with most of its inhabitants dislocated, displaced, it needed a spiritual center that would hold. She saw the Axis Mundi, where the uprooted people would be met with the divine and find their home in it. She knew God desired a vineyard growing out of the ashes left by the war. So Reverend Katsuno went about building a church, overcoming many challenges that she faced because she was a Christian minister until recently a religion of the enemy. And the female leader at that, also an overly. When she was negotiating the land for the sanctuary, the landlord said, well, in case your efforts do not bear fruit, I will sell you the back face part. To which Reverend Katsuno responded, this is for God's house. I will take the front face plot. Thank you very much. <laughs> and she was my first pastor. And my mother was one of the earliest branches in that church, which had 40 members when it was chartered. 70 years later, the membership is, membership is still roughly 40. Yet, Throughout the years, the church has nurtured disciples pruned by Jesus' words and by the loving hands of God. I left that church and went off to a faraway country. And look where I landed. <laughs> I wonder how each of you has been led to this place, to this moment to this center. And what stories of this place, of this location, you have lived. And I also wonder how collective, collectively we might grow together as Hannah Springs Community Presbyterian Church. Serving the heart, serving from the heart of Hades Springs. May we remain the heartbeat of Hades now and into God's future, abiding in love, in love of Christ, and bearing much fruit. May it be so. Hymn is number eight uh, three hundred eighteen. In Christ, there is no place nor end. God's call to your community.
with the offering of our very lives in the fruit of our labor. <laughs> Please be seated. When Laura and I and Shannon got together with the Kappa to talk about the worship service, um, we told her the prayers of the people. You can do anything you want with the worship service, but don't mess with the prayers of the people. <laughs> and, and one of the reasons why is because I think it's very important to all of us to pray together and to hear our concerns together. And how it works in our congregation is I'll invite people to share prayer concerns and after they share that concern. Um, and we, in some cases, need to repeat it for our Zoom uh, congregation. Uh, then we all respond with the words, Lord, hear our prayer. And then we work through that together as we um, share prayer concerns with one another. So are there prayer concerns to share with the church family? Yes, Glenn. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, ma'am. Could you say her name again? Miranda Romero. Miranda Romero, let us remember her in our thoughts and prayers. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Yes, Steve. For travel safety as Marley had back cancer support and as Mark and Susan make their way slowly back to me. Indeed, traveling mercies for family and for friends and those we love. Lord, hear our prayers. James. For my son Abbott, who's recovering from COVID. In his name? Abbott. Abbott. Let us hold Abbott in our prayers for well-being and healing. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, Barbara. Uh, prayers for my cousin Renee. She has liver cancer and has been in the last hours. Let us hold Renee in our prayers as she suffers from liver cancer and is close 
to death, may she feel the presence and the peace of Christ. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes. I think we should all pray with and for Reverend Tarina. To pray with and for Reverend Tarina. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes. Let us remember Brian and our thoughts and prayers as he heals from surgery. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, ma'am. I want to um, remind us all that despite the fact that people aren't actively grieving anymore, we still have a lot of members of our congregation grieving. And I want to ask prayers for our friend Kay and her partner, Henry. Kay is the one I prayed for last week. And she's between, she's in one of those thin places. Uh -huh. And not sure which way she wants to go. And her name again is Kay. Kay. Kay and her partner Henry. Let us pray for Kay and her partner Henry. Henry, as they go through difficult but hopefully significant faith giving times. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Yes. For a friend of Rob Oldberg Atkinson, and I see you with multiple problems that are running in your elbows. Let us remember Herb in our prayers as he goes through tests and pray for his health and well being. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. Yes, Doug. Yeah. Uh, I just want to. Pray for all these little rugrats that are here. <laughs> yes. God bless them and God bless Mama. God bless Mamas and the wonderful children. Lord, hear our prayers. Glenn. Go ahead, ma'am. Oh, I just have a prayer for um, some very dear friends that are recovering right now Martha and Tom and Jay. Martha and Tom and Martha. Jay. Martha. Martha and Tom and Jay. Let us remember them in our thoughts and prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. I would also invite you to remember our dear friend Tom and his family who are going through a very difficult time, both personally and vocationally, and pray peace might surround them. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, sir. Craig, Papa's mother is going to this Well, let's say hello to Taco's mother and to include her in our prayers. Lord, hear yeah, our prayers. Thank you. Let us pray for the gift that we have of many wonderful faith communities within our valley, and that we might open our hearts to one another and learn from one another. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes. Say Oh, of course. Remember Della King in our prayers as, as she continues to adjust to the loss of which may she know God's comfort as well. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, Lord. For continued healing for Miguel after his surgery. Indeed. Let us call Miguel on our thoughts and prayers and um, pray that great healing and great patience. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayers. Shannon. Uh, two of our newer members, Charlie and Leah, who are at home with a sick friend. Let us remember Char uh, Charles and Leah. And they're zooming. So. And they're zooming, and God bless you, and God bless Dazzle. And they dazzle feel them. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, Matt. For Mike Smith, who's traveling to Houston, Texas for yet another hip surgery. Let's so nice remember Mike Smith, who heads for Texas for hip surgery. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, awesome. And her name again? Carla. Carla, suffering from ALS, which is such a mean and vicious disease. Let us hold her in our hearts and pray God's peace upon her. Lord, hear our prayers. Any other? 
Then let us join our hearts together in prayer as we pray the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand and join in our closing hymn number 306. Bless me the tie that binds. Just I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. May Christ's joy be in you, and may your joy be complete. Now go out into the into the world and love and serve the Lord. Thank you. 